Steph? Hey. You there? Your camera's off. Just a sec, I'm coming. Hey, is this time okay? You look really frazzled. No such thing as a good time anymore. <laughs> I'm ready to throttle Billy. I can't believe he just did that. Hold on. Billy, pick them up. It wasn't an accident. Don't whine, just pick them up. What happened? Billy's acting out. He kicked over a big box of Legos. Why would he do that? Just because it was there. That's a mess. It's all a mess. The whole house. I can't keep up with anything. And, and you know what? I don't care anymore. <coughs> Billy, stop that. Sorry, Katie. John! Where is he? In the basement. What time is it? Two o'clock. He was supposed to relieve me 20 minutes ago so I could talk to you. His meeting should be over by now. John! He probably fell asleep on the sofa down there. We're both exhausted. Sis, deep breath. Oh my God, Claire, no! Be right back. Give me that! You said you were drawing me a picture. I'll do this. John, I'll be right there, Katie. Take your time, I have all day. That was such a stupid thing to say. I meant, don't worry, I'm not in a rush. Beck, sorry. Everything okay? Small emergency involving a knife and a five-year-old. A real knife? I didn't have time to cut the crust off Claire's sandwich, so she took things into her own hands. What's up? I wish I could help. I don't want to rush you, Katie, but John is MIA and things are rapidly going to fucking hell. Uh, you didn't hear that, sweetie. Go eat in the kitchen and give mommy some privacy. <laughs> I am really losing it. Now I'm swearing in front of the kids. I have something important to tell you. I hope it's good news. I really need some good news. Did you get the promotion? Better than that. <laughs> Do you need to go? No. Let them kill each other. At least I'll get a nap. I'm pregnant. Uh, I told you you could have one of mine. At this point, you take both. You're joking, right? About that? Never. You know how hard we tried. The in vitro was a nightmare. You said it didn't work. Didn't. Okay, so immaculate conception? Sperm donor? That's the best part. The last time Brad and I, you know... It finally took. Can you believe it? No. I mean, yes, I suppose. It's... I don't know what to say. I know, right? <laughs> I thought you'd be thrilled. Jumping up and down. I, I am thrilled. I'm, I'm not jumping. I'm, I'm too tired. Katie, are you sure you, this is what you want? How can you ask me that? It's hard enough raising kids with two people sharing the load. That's the second reason for the call. So before you say no, listen. No, 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 no. You haven't even heard what I... Not you, Billy. <laughs> Billy, get out of here with that thing. Do not, I repeat, do not open that cage door. Go. It's Billy's month to take care of the class gerbil, and it keeps escaping. We have already had to run out and buy one imposter. The original Mr. Pickles is living in our wall somewhere. Billy, I said no! I want to come there. We'll feed it later! I don't care! Go!
Wait, what? What did you say? Can I come stay with you? Now? No, of course not. Why not? You're pregnant, Katie. You have to fly. You can't take any chances. I'll drive. It's one night in a hotel and I'll bring a bucket of disinfectant. Or I'll buy a hazmat suit. Alone? Anything could happen. I'm a big girl. I'll be fine. We're all working virtually, right? So I can help out watching the kids until the baby comes. We can take shifts. Your basement has a sleeper sofa. We help each other. It's a win-win. You shouldn't have to drink a whole bottle of wine every night to unwind. Half. John drinks the other half and it's red. What difference does that make? The French drink red wine and live longer. (laughs) Katie, it's so chaotic here. John and I argue all the time and the kids are so bored and they whine about everything. We're all miserable. You don't get to be miserable. No matter how hard it gets, be grateful that you're all healthy. Never take that for granted. I wasn't thinking, Katie, I'm sorry. I won't overstay my welcome if that's what you're worried about. I'm worried about you. Your whole support system is there. You'd be leaving that. It's you I want with me when the baby comes. I can't do this alone. I need you. I got the name of a really good midwife. If something goes wrong, the hospital is miles away. Hold on. I am almost done, sweetie. I'm talking to Auntie Katie. Claire is blowing you kisses. Kiss, kiss, snickerdoodle. (laughs) Uh, He can't right now. He's, uh, he's working. Go finish your drawing, okay? What did she want? Uh, to talk to Brad. You haven't told the kids? We thought we'd wait until the whole thing is... They need to know the truth. I couldn't do it, Katie. Just just thinking about it. Don't you dare cry. I know, I know. If you start... I'm sorry. I have a box of tissues around here somewhere. And I knew if the kids saw me crying, then they would ask why. And I didn't want to lie. So I've been holding it all in. Where are the damn tissues? I... Finally, nobody puts anything back where it belongs. Wipe your eyes. The whole town opened their windows and sang for him. I want Billy and Claire to know how much their uncle was respected and loved for the work he did. I'm still getting cards from the families of his patients five months later. You're right. Let me talk to John. So much can go wrong between now and the birth. You scared? Not too much. I'm about ready to pop. What? How far along? I'm due next month. Next month? Let me explain. How could you keep this from me? I'm your sister. I didn't tell anyone. Not even mom and dad. All those times we sat on the phone for hours and and you never once said one word. Brad and I were waiting three months before announcing, making sure nothing would go wrong. And then something did. Just not what we expected. All the more reason to have someone to share it with. That's just it. I did. You'll think this is whatever, but there was a part of me that felt like As long as I kept it a secret, I could pretend that Brad was still here. I had part of him inside me, and I know this sounds nutty, but I'd lie awake at night, rub my tummy, and talk to him. I never got to say goodbye, and I needed the time to do that. Brad and I made a baby, Steph. I hope he looks just like Brad. It's a boy? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. How did I get so lucky? Brad was so handsome, wasn't he? 
losing all those patients unnecessarily really crushed him. If the virus hadn't beaten him, I think he would have eventually died of a broken heart. I miss him. Katie, enough. I'm starting to sound like a Hallmark card. <laughs> You'll have a ringside seat at the birth, and I want Jasper to see his Auntie Steph as soon as he enters the world. Jasper? Like the ghost? <laughs> That's Casper. Don't ask. Brad picked it. If it was a girl, he wanted Geraldine after his grandmother. Thank God it's a boy. <laughs> you know John will say yes if you say yes. You are the baby whisperer, sis. You know you want to. Oh, I do love babies. It's, it's when they start to grow up. So, unless John objects, which he won't, it's settled. You gotta go start packing. I love you. I love you too. Oh, <laughs> there you are. Your hair is all wonky. You look like you just woke up from a much-needed nap. You can come in, sweetie. Is that your drawing? Let me see. It's Auntie Katie and Uncle Brad. She is going to love this. Go and hang it up in the basement. Ask Billy to help you. Auntie Katie is coming to visit. Ah. Uh, I'll explain. And that's where she's going to sleep. How about we turn on a movie for the kids? I tell you about Katie, and then we retire to the bedroom and get reacquainted. I can't resist you with that hair. And I miss you.